The upcoming series of Star Trek Strange New World with Captain Pike and crew features new and returning characters to the Star Trek universe. One character in particular has caught my eye, mainly because he's a member of a species we have seen before in Trek. That would be Hammer. Welcome to Trek Central, I'm your host Captain Jack and let's get right into it. Star Trek Day 2021 gave us plenty of surprise announcements, including our first small look at Star Trek Strange New Worlds. While we've got a good look at Anson Mount's Captain Pike and the additional new cast members joining him on the Enterprise, we're also introduced to a new character of Hemmer, an Anar who is played by Canadian actor Bruce Horak. Let's dive in and see what makes this character so special. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Star Trek universe. So where have you seen the Anar species before? Well, if you watch Star Trek Enterprise, then you might have noticed them. The Anar species are a subspecies of the Andorians. Yes, those Andorians we've seen throughout the many iterations of Star Trek in the universe before. The Anar were native to the northern wastes of Andoria, in subterranean compounds shielded by dampening fields to not be discovered. They consisted of a population of only a few thousand around the time of the 22nd century. Physiologically, the Aena were very similar to the Andorans, due to being a subspecies and all. Looking at the Aena, they looked almost identical to Andorans as well, but the stark difference was they had no skin or hair pigmentation, resulting in pale and white skin appearance. What made the subspecies so unique and special, compared to the Andorans, was the fact they had highly evolved telepathic abilities. An Aena was capable of reading minds and therefore physically projecting themselves onto other humanoids. Given the majority of the Aena were blind, they used telepathy to communicate with each other. Their telepathic strength allowed them to see the world around them. The Aena were largely considered a myth by Andorian society until 2104, when Andorians discovered the Aena living on a planet in the northern wastes. It's Enar. They're a kind of subspecies. Blind ice dwellers. For most of our history, they were considered a myth, stories we told our children. But 50 years ago, they were discovered living in the northern wastes. Due to the cultural differences, relations were difficult between the species and subspecies. However, the Aenor maintained diplomatic relations and contact with the Andorian government even if they were determined to be extremely secretive. By 2154, the Aenor were forced into interstellar affairs. This was due to the meddling of the Romulan Star Empire, in which they kidnapped an individual named Garib, and forced him to use his telepathy to pilot an experimental Romulan drone ship fitted with holographic emitters. The goal of the Romulans was to use the drone ships to destabilise the growing political alliances between Earth, the Andorians and the Tellarites. The first critical attack was destroying Andorian Commander Shran's warship, Kamari, as was the Andorian ambassador's ship as well. The drone ship used its holographic emitters to appear as other ships when attacking enemies, in order to sow chaos between these powers. Eventually, the NX-01 Enterprise, under the command of Captain Jonathan Archer, caught up with a Morda drone and started to put an end to the crisis. Ironically, the drone ship presence and the use of the Aenar caused what the Romans hoped to avoid, an alliance against them. The crisis united the Andorians, Tellarites, Humans and Vulcans against the drone, who eventually attacked and forced to withdraw to Romulan space. Thankfully, Captain Archer convinced another Aenar, Jamal, to come aboard Enterprise and interface with the drone using a homemade telepresence unit. Jamal was successful as she used her telepathy to communicate with the drone Aenar pilot, Garab, her brother, and asked him to stop the attacks. While Garab died by Admiral Valdor shooting him, he successfully destroyed one drone ship, allowing Enterprise and the Alliance fleet to destroy the other. Hemo is the unique new interesting character that will be on board the USS Enterprise in the upcoming Star Trek Strange New World series. How far into Pike's crew is so far unknown, but we do see him wearing a red shirt, so perhaps he's in the engineering department or something along those lines. What is really cool is that the actor Bruce Horak is in fact legally blind himself, meaning he'll be the first legally blind actor to play a Star Trek main character. Once again, Star Trek champions exclusivity and equal opportunities. A blind man playing a blind alien species is also really cool. I personally find it great for reasons I've just mentioned. We have seen a blind engineering officer before, as obviously that man is Geordi LaForge, who was born blind and had to use a vise in order to see. Obviously in the crew reveal of Strange New Worlds, we did not see Hemmer wearing a visor, but it's interesting to note that a more chunky visor compared to Geordi's was seen in Star Trek Discovery, obviously a precursor to the iconic visor we see Geordi wearing in Star Trek The Next Generation. How might Hemmer work aboard the US Enterprise without the use of a visor? 
Even if his telephony gives him some degree of ability to see his surroundings, how might he work on the starship? Well, there are a number of options we can explore. An alternate timeline in 2374 saw Lieutenant Commander Tuvok become blinded by detonating a Chronoton torpedo. Due to Voyager's low crew complement as a result of constant attacks, he still needed to serve on the bridge. Doing so meant his tactical station on the bridge would need some sort of special controls, as he can no longer read the L car displays. Well, during the 24th century, a feature of Starfleet's L car panels worked to alter the typical flat panels intended to be read to a more tactile display. So the user of poor eyesight, or who were blind in Tuvok's case, could use for consoles. This type of interface was activated by a user asking the computer to activate the tactile interface. It's possible that during Pike's time, the computer interface that operated on the Enterprise would have a similar system. Then again, the USS Enterprise that Captain Pike commanded, which would later be commanded by Captain Kirk, did use manual systems such as buttons and controls to operate it. Buttons and controls could easily be fitted with Braille to aid visually impaired crew members to operate the ship's systems. Another option could actually be a really nice link to the ANR and the Enterprise, which is the utilisation of a telepresence unit, which would allow Hemmer to communicate with the ship and diagnose problems easily in order to fix them even using the units of older systems on the ship in different situations. The telepresent unit seen in the Enterprise during the 22nd century was a very hefty piece of equipment, resulting in the user having to be stationary while using it. But we could see that come the 23rd century, enough research has been taking place for it to be an implant or a wearable piece of equipment. I think this would be a great way to not only honour the ANR's previous appearance in Trek, but also show an interesting way to differentiate Hemmer from the other Enterprise engineers if he's an engineer after all. Regardless of how it works, seeing Hemmer in action during Star Trek Stranger Worlds is going to be fantastic. Not only are we getting more representation in Star Trek, but also getting to see more of the ANR species, which is a great element of Star Trek Enterprise. Are you excited to see how the character of Hemmer will fit into Star Trek Stranger Worlds? I know I am. If you want to keep up to date on the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from myself and the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media or join our community Discord server. For now, I've been Captain Jack. Thanks for watching and we'll see you very soon. Live long and prosper, my friends. Goodbye.